Good morning. Today is Friday, September 23rd, 2022. If someone asks you a question, besides giving the answer, there are many variations in how you give that answer. It could be yes or no. It could be with varying levels of explanation. It could be with more or less empathy, hopefully more. And it could also be with more or less ancillary information or insight. My main teacher for practical halakha, Jewish law, is Rabbi Moshe Heinemann, who lives in Baltimore. Rav Heinemann is a world-famous authority in every area of Jewish law. I had the privilege to have him as my Rebbe, my Talmud teacher, in grade 11 at Ner Yisrael, the yeshiva in Baltimore that I attended for high school, and I stayed on there for a number of years. And I continue learning from Rav Heinemann, and I am indebted to him for all he taught me and for all that he continues to teach me. I was attracted not only by his expertise, but also by his character, his mannerisms, and his humor among many, many other great qualities, Rav Heinemann has the ability, when answering a question, to convey with few words much more than just the yes or no on the topic that is directly being discussed. And this is just one example. Now, I need to provide an introduction and the introduction is a bit technical, but I promise if you hold on, if you stay with me, you will be rewarded with a gem at the end. Okay. We use a mikvah, which is a ritual bath for several different purposes in Jewish life. A married woman immerses in a mikvah after her period as a ritual of purification symbolizing her rebirth. A person immerses in a mikvah to convert to Judaism, to transform and to be reborn with a new Jewish identity. A new utensil used for cooking or eating is immersed in a mikvah to elevate its status to be used for mitzvos involving food, like celebrating Shabbos and Yom Tov, offering hospitality, and other mitzvos that we're able to do with food and drink. Now, these are all different. Each one of these has different details, many, many different details, different procedures, but there is a common denominator of all of these usages of the mikvah. Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. In all cases, the water of the mikvah must touch every part of the body or object at one single moment, with nothing shielding the water, preventing the water from coming into direct contact with every inch of the surface. Practically speaking, for new utensils that have to be immersed in a mikvah, all of the labels and the stickers must be removed first. And sometimes this can be tedious, frustrating uh, to remove uh, not only a stubborn sticker that seems to be adhered with something like Gorilla Glue, but even the residue of glue that is underneath the sticker also has to be removed until the utensil is perfectly 
clean and smooth so that the water can touch even that part of the utensil that had been under the sticker that was there originally. Now, I'm going to oversimplify just a bit here, but the standard for what and how much must be removed depends on two criteria, and this is practical, applicable halakha, anytime we have utensils that we are going to take to the mikvah. A utensil can be immersed in the mikvah if what remains is so minor that it is miut ve'eno makbid. Miut means it is a minority, meaning it covers only a minority of the entire object. Certainly with a label or a sticker, this is rarely a problem. We don't have to concern ourselves with this. But the second criteria is very significant and very applicable. Eno makbid, meaning I don't mind it. It doesn't bother me to be there. In other words, if what remains on the utensil is so minor that I don't mind it being there and I am happy for it to stay there permanently, then that's considered as if it's part of the utensil and it does not need to be removed before immersing it in the mikvah. <clears throat> for example, let's say you have a pot, a new pot, and the pot has a handle that screws on. You could unscrew the handle to remove it. You could screw it back on to attach it. Now, when you have the handle screwed into the pot in place, where the handle touches the pot, the handle is actually covering a very tiny area of the surface of the pot so that water, when you immerse it in a mikvah, is not going to reach there. <clears throat> Maybe you have to disassemble the handle, take it off from the pot, so that when you immerse the pot, the water is touching every part, even what is in between underneath the where the handle is attached? The answer is no, no. Because you want the handle to be attached, you plan to use the pot with the handle attached, that's the way that you immerse the mikvah, even, the, immerse the utensil in the mikvah, even though it will actually be covering a very tiny part of the surface of the pot. Okay. <clears throat> but a sticker is a problem because most people don't want a sticker to remain on a utensil. It doesn't look nice. So, as I said, it has to be removed entirely. But you should be able to see that there is a subjective element to this. What if the sticker is, I happen to have a glass here, what if the sticker is on the bottom of the glass and is not visible? So you set your table and you have guests come and no one is going to notice the sticker. Do you mind if it's there then? Maybe you don't mind. And in that case, if you truly don't mind, you would not have to remove it before immersing it in the mikvah. Okay. That's the introduction to what I want to discuss. <clears throat> now for the reward. A married couple bought a set of glasses, and the glasses need to be immersed in the mikvah. On each glass, there is a sticker. But the sticker is on the bottom of the glass. And the way this glass is made, and the way the sticker is placed the sticker is only slightly visible. Only if you look very carefully will you notice the sticker when it's set on a table. So, the husband came to Rav Heinemann, and the husband asked Rav Heinemann the following question. What happens, Rebbe, if this new glass that we bought together to use in our home, I look at the glass I don't see the sticker. It doesn't bother me at all. I'm happy for the sticker to remain forever. But my wife doesn't like it there. My wife wants it to be removed. Does that constitute 
and interposition, something that is a barrier to the water touching that must be removed because my wife does not want it to remain, or since, and I'm also an owner, we're both owners, the fact that I don't mind it being there, does that mean that we do not have to remove the sticker? It's a great question, right? It's a good question. In, in this issue, what if there are two people involved and it bothers one person and doesn't bother the other person? All right, it's a good question. Listen, please, to Rav Heinemann's answer. Here's the gem. <clears throat> he answered as follows. If a man's wife is makpid, meaning the wife does not want the sticker there, why doesn't the husband also not want the sticker there? He said to this man, you should not want the sticker there if your wife does not want the sticker there. Wow, what a lesson. It is, not only does Rav Heinemann provide guidance in a very technical detail of ritual law, but along the way, he provides what I think is a significant lesson in Shalom Bias. If something bothers my spouse, it should bother me. That's a, a lesson in how to relate in how to respect and how to show honor to the other person. If it bothers you, it bothers me. It becomes my problem. It becomes my issue. This is just one example of providing multiple lessons in multiple areas of life with a single brief answer. And, at the same time, providing guidance that every one of us can use to improve our marriage and our intimate relationships. If it bothers you, and I care about you, it bothers me as well. My friends, I want to wish you a great day and a wonderful Shabbos. And again, I take the opportunity to wish you Shana Tova. Today brings to an end the year's worth of learning that we've been doing in the morning, 10 at 9. We're not going to be learning together on Sunday morning, as I mentioned. So um, I want to express my tremendous gratitude to every one of you for joining. Some of you every single day, I am so moved uh, by the generosity that you show in joining together. And truly, you have transformed my life. I mean that very, very seriously. My opportunity to be able to spend time preparing and delivering and correcting afterwards the mistakes that I make. Uh, but it is a major part of my life and it would not happen without you. And I'm very grateful to you. So I'm very grateful for all that we did during 5782, and I look forward to studying together with you in 5783 and hopefully beyond. Shana Tova.